We know that long travel EMTBs can winch up smooth fire roads and single tracks to shuttle riders to the top of a bike park. But how do they get on with the absolute monster horror shows of technical and steep climbs? Climbs where their suspension travel may be more of a hindrance than of a help. Climbs that are proper backcountry wild rides. Well, today we're gonna find out. The World Cup in Fort William is one of the most iconic races in the international downhill schedule. A track which in its 20 year existence has been manufactured into one of the ultimate tests. 2.8 kilometers, 565 meters, a descent full of rock, root, gaps and jumps, and definitely no place to go offline. But that is over 100 miles south of here, a place that has a chairlift taking riders to the top and a selection of coffee shops and restaurants and also some shelter should the weather get wet and windy. Very different to here, Torridon, remote, a powerful place, one of towering cliffs. And if you get away from the A896, get to trails which are unmanufactured, technical masterpieces. Not everyone's cup of tea. And so the plan is to take a downhill bike up one of those difficult climbs, which is why we've partnered with Shimano and Husqvarna to see if this is possible. The Husqvarna Extreme Cross bike that we're riding today is a full-on downhill bike. It's low, it's slack, and it's long. The trouble with downhill bikes is they're designed to fall off mountains, as in free fall, and very quickly too. They can be one-dimensional, hedonistic, their mindsets loose, slack, and able to cope with trouble at high speed. The Husqvarna can do this, and it can do it well. The thing with climbing is that it's a very different game, requiring a very different breed. Agile, light, tight, all the things then that this bike is not. Except, well, except this bike isn't any ordinary downhill bike, and with its Shimano EP8 motor, a belay device to prevent falling back or getting off, yes, but mainly for cranking and clawing your way up rock faces. This Husky was very much my Sherpa. I think one of the key parts about this bike, tackling this climb, is the fact that it's got a pretty big chain ring up front and a pretty close ratio a cassette on the back. It is quite different to most e-mountain bikes on the market. And of course the travel, 200 mil front and rear. It's made for climbing up fire roads and then descending technical terrain. So we've got a 630 watt hour internal battery plus the Shimano EP8 motor which kicks out 85 newton meters of torque. The bike comes with two set profiles in terms of the assist levels and I'm going to be riding it in profile one which means higher speed but less range. And so we begin the task, a technical jigsaw. No, not just articulating and navigating Scottish summit names, but understanding rock, being fluent in the flow of the mountain. And all whilst expressing to Ben behind the lens that this was a very stupid idea. Why? Well, to tackle this stage in sections is tough enough, but as a one stage, one effort mix of say 10,000 meters versus shot put versus Dwayne Johnson, it was pretty full on. The climb was from sea level at the Lake of Torridon, skirting the northeast face of Mialkian Jerig via Bialak Nalis to a saddle at Bialak Ban at around the 600 mark. All single track, all rock, and very much all in. The trail begins relatively innocently, some smooth slab and mellow inclines. It even flattens out for about a minute before the following 59 minutes of utter physicality. Now this is more like the type of surface that this 200 mil downhill bike is designed for. It's designed for going up fire roads and hitting those big descents, but I tell you what, I'm happy for this light relief at the moment. And look at that backdrop. Already in a pretty big arm wrestle with this hill. So what I'm riding up here is pretty much downhill territory. It's like, it's just constant collisions. You're gonna 
you've got to kind of work it out as much going up as you have going down. Now, just to put it in perspective, we've seen some mountain bikers pushing their bikes up here because it's simply not possible. I'm not actually sure it's possible on this bike, but it's really physical when you're fighting with the ground. When you're pushing a mountain bike, it's not actually quite as challenging as this. My legs are screaming. There'd be no pitons or any time for foot jams or prussic loops on this ascent. The aim was to get to a saddle in the saddle within an hour. To do this meant no hiker bike or any time for hang dogs. This was a power stage on EPO, sorry, EP8. And then it changes to loose ground. So you can keep your momentum. And then loose ground and step. Oh my God. Now, you tell me if that's physical or not. So I'm constantly now looking for ways to, oh, there you go, to get off those really washed out stream beds. As you can see, this is actually a walk in the park and I'm now in turbo so I can drop it down in the trail mode just to conserve some battery. Now, as you can see, there are moments during this climb where I can cut loose on some flat bit of terrain and, uh, oh, hold up, here we go, and uh, eek a crossing. Wow, this is <laughs> precarious. And then cracking on again. As in properly cracking on. Slab ahead, slip it is. So good. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's tough, but the terrain is spectacular. By the three quarter point, I was getting Elvis legs, at times having to back her into trail mode as my body was unable to cope with the power of boost, a mode that I was using for dino moments of attack. I am properly struggling here. Right, really struggling. Oh. But, oh my God, I just shut up a minute. That's your energy. Oh. Oh. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna be hurting tonight. Tip is to take your time. And pick your way up it, find your lines, sight them up and go for it. Having battled with Duane but still smarting from almost an hour of single track suffering, the rock and roll turns into something more hunky. Ahead of me lay a monster lump of Torridonian sandstone and quartzite. With wobbly legs and slightly short of breath, I take a stab at the slab, a final act of torture to the top of this very special stage. I'm finding this a struggle now. Plus, I've got this monumental sting in the tail. Ah. Ah. And so, after an hour of battling uphill on a bike whose normal focus is a five minute downhill brawl, I topped out, very much in the red. And then, after a plowman's and a lie down, it was time to reflect. I'm not gonna lie, that was hard. Uh, it was hard physically and technically. And when you consider that it took just over an hour and you compare that to uh, a power stage at an Enduro World Series event, which takes on average just over a minute, really just put it into perspective. And when I mentioned earlier that you don't normally get bikes like this, e-mountain bikes like this, what I meant was you don't actually get 
e-mountain bike sort of adventure e-mountain bikes with that amount of travel and that componentry on there. So when you consider the low gears and the heavier weight and the geometry which wasn't actually meant for the purpose then I think it did exceptionally well. Plus remember we've got that EP8 motor which uh, helped us get up that climb uh, with the 625 watt hour battery. So uh, all told I think full credit to a bike such as that a certain, a certain breed of bike, a downhill bike, to get up a climb like that. Obviously, you've got the seat drop, which helped as well, and traction from the tyres. But um, the great thing now is that I've got 200 mil travel to cane it off the top of this hill. And that's the great thing with having loads of travel. I can now dive off this hill with a little bit more comfort, a bit more control. Maybe get a little bit wilder.